Good morning, online students. Today we're going to talk more about human environment interaction. Uh, so you can open up this day three and four, and you should have the note sheet here as well as the slides. Um, on these slides, you're going to see that there's the first few are the same as yesterday. Um, so if you haven't already, make sure that you go on Newzella, read the climate change in the Southwest and do that assignment that was posted yesterday. So read the article, type the quiz, highlight three things you learned, and post those to Google Classroom. Um, those are the first part of your notes. So then you'll do that before you start the notes today. And you'll notice that on your worksheet there is a spot for you to type in what you learned from the article before the notes actually start. So make sure that you do that Newzella article. That is a work and effort grade for this week. So let's get into our notes. So then the notes would start right here where it says human environment interaction. And you'll see that that slide matches up on slide five. So here we go. As you talked about yesterday, human environment interaction is a term that describes the relationship between the hum human beings and the natural world that we live in. And you can think about the interaction as the same as like any other kind of human relationship, like with your friends or family, where you have to cooperate and work both ways. The relationship can be either positive or it can be a negative relationship based on the ways that the different participants involve. So human environment interaction is how humans change their environment and how the environment changes the way that we live. Yesterday we talked about some of the challenges the natural world can give us, like natural disasters or, you know, animals attacking humans or eating our stuff. But at the same time, humans can also negatively affect the environment if we pollute it or if we are, do not use our resources in a sustainable way. So let's talk about some of the things that have to revolve with human environment interaction. So adaptation. An adaptation is when people make adjustments in order to live in their environment. Um, an example in, South, in Colorado would be an A-frame home. So many mountain homes are built with a steep A-frame roof. This is not just because it looks cool, it's an adaptation. In the mountains when it snows a lot, the A-frame roof will help create this, the runoff so that the roof does not cave in with the pressure of all of the snow. So that would be an example of an adaptation where people in the mountains have made an adjustment by building their homes with an A-frame shaped roof to live in their environment. Here are some other examples of adaptations. So human beings have created different methods of transportation to help them adapt to both air and to water. So, you know, different kinds of boats would be an example of an adaptation to living in a watery environment different, like an airplane or a sailing ship, the way that a sports car is designed with aerodynamics or a train have been adapted to the air to make sure that they can move in a certain way. Humans also adapt to their climate with warm clothing or fireplaces. Beach houses are often raised up uh, in case there is flooding. Sunglasses are an adaptation, air conditioning, and we even have adaptations for recreating, like water skiing or surfing or hang gliding or kayaking. Now, a modification is our next term. So a modification is when people actually change the environment to meet the needs of human beings. So in this case, we were actually completely altering our, own, our landscape. And here's an example of the Eisenhower Tunnel. This is a tunnel that's over a mile and a half long. It's on Interstate 70 in Colorado, and if you drive on this, it actually goes through the mountains. This tunnel makes transportation quicker and easier for drivers by modifying the environment and cutting a tunnel through it. So let's compare modifications with adaptations. Here you have an example of a terraced farming, so where people have cut out little steps to farm in a mountain environment. Would this be a modification? or an adaptation. If you're thinking modification, you are correct. People have actually changed the landscape here to adapt to their environment. Here are some other examples. A mountain lift, would that be a modification or an adaptation? A boat, a bridge, a tunnel, a dog sled, or even a walking bridge. 
So which of these are modifications, which of them are adaptations? Well, all of these things, except for the tunnel, are adaptations. They are things humans have built to adapt to their environment. The only one that actually involves modifying the environment is the tunnel. All the rest of them are adaptations. So an adaptation is a thing that we build to help us adjust our environment, like a bridge, a lift, a boat, a sled. A tunnel would be we actually change the physical environment itself. Dependence is our next term. So dependence happens when people depend on their environment to meet their needs. Example in Colorado would be farmers depend on the snow melt from the mountains to feed the rivers for irrigation. So if you go up super high in the mountains, you'll often see these epic snowpacks that are bigger than cars. And they are, those are important so that farmers in the plains have enough water to feed their crops every year. We also depend on natural resources for much of our lives. So let's talk about natural resources next. Natural resources are materials that exist, oh, let me go back. Materials that exist in nature that humans can use for their benefit. And we depend on these things for much of our, uh, our life. Renewable resources are resources that can be used again and again if we manage them right, like even forests. We cut them down, but we can replant them and grow them back. So forests are renewable. They can be used again and again if we use them the right way. Wind energy, sunlight energy, hydropower, those things are renewable. They aren't gonna go away if we manage them correctly. Non-renewable resources can only be used one time and then they are gone. Oil, natural gas, minerals, coal, these are things examples of non-renewable resources because they can only be used once and once we use up all of the oil on the earth, then we are out of luck and we can no longer use that again. So renewable resources are better because they, if we can figure out how to access their energy, we can use them again and again in a, what we call a sustainable way. So food is an example of a natural resource. Fruits and vegetables are renewable resources. We can grow them again and again if we manage them the right way. And so all of the different kinds of plants that we eat are renewable resources. Believe it or not, animal, animals can be considered a renewable resource if we use them the right way. So if we do not over hunt or over farm, if we farm in a sustainable way, we can keep using um, animal resources for food. Shelter construction, we need natural resources to build shelters. We can use bricks, thatch, lumber, stone, steel and glass, and bamboo. Again, if we don't cut down the forest or use too much of these things, they can be renewable resources. Power is really important. So oil and coal, these are non-renewable. We can only use them once. Water, wind, solar, and geothermal energy, which is like heat from the earth, that can be used more than one time. So those would be renewable resources. The idea of sustainability is really important for thinking about how humans can interact with the environment in a positive way. So sustainability is the ability to maintain the use of a resource without using it all up, like we just talked about. If we keep replanting our crops every year in a good way, then we are being sustainable and we can keep that going for future generations. If we hunt all of the animals to extinction, we are not being sustainable and that damages the environment because that species would go extinct. So sometimes the effects can be permanent if we don't use our resources in a sustainable way. Examples of sustainable use would be solar energy, which never goes away, or wind power, recycling and reusing products. And then sometimes people get creative. This product is called an edible bowl. It's made from plants. And this bowl, when you finish it, you eat it. So in this way, you're using being sustainable and not creating waste by throwing out a plastic bowl you are reusing the bowl and turning it into energy for yourself. That'd be a creative way of being sustainable. And if we aren't sustainable, we can have negative effects. So air pollution is an example of being not sustainable. So is water pollution. So is habitat destruction, where we destroy animal habitats. 
and so is hunting species to being endangered. So all of those things are not sustainable. They're things that humans have done that are negative for the environment. Okay, that's just, those are your notes for today. At the end of your notes, you need to answer these five questions. So you need to use the notes and the pictures and the slideshow and the video to help you answer these five questions. And please write incomplete sentences for me. Thank you very much. Email me if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.